Okay, never do this in algebra or in mathematics. Now, what is this? Well, I'm going to explain to you uh, precisely what this is, and we're going to use this uh, problem as an example uh, to make this point, because you never want to do this. Okay, now what am I talking about? Well, I'm going to explain that in just one second, but uh, first let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can check out my math help program by uh, following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. I have all, I have all the main courses like pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here shortly. But I, I also do a lot of area in the area of test preparation. So if you're taking, like, let's say, like the GED, SAT, ACT, uh, Alex exam, uh, CLEP exam, AccuPlacer, uh, maybe a teacher certification exam or a nursing entrance exam or the ASVAB, all these courses have significant math sections on them. And if you don't pass the math on those uh, particular exams, you don't pass the exam. So that's not good. So I could definitely help you out uh, in terms of your uh, preparation for these exams. Just go to my site, check out my full course catalog. I should have what you uh, are studying. If I don't, drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. Also do a lot with uh, independent learners uh, like homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning system. And then obviously I help those of you that are just struggling in your current math courses. But uh, one thing that I can't do for you, okay, that is absolutely essential to be successful in mathematics, and that is the following, that is note-taking, okay? It's critical, right? And it's just over decades of teaching mathematics, it's, it's apparent to me that those students who take excellent uh, math notes, I'm, not, I'm talking about great math notes, almost always do very well in math, and the reverse is true. Those students who think they have some sort of magical superpower, like, I don't need to take notes because I remember everything, well... Uh, hit to burst your bubble, but there's about maybe 0.00001% of the population that actually have that superpower. And uh, so anyways, listen, if you have that, then that's fine. But most people think they have this and they end up not doing well. There's just too much information uh, in mathematics. You have to be paying attention and you can't be distracted. And there's so much distraction out there. So the key to learning anything is to uh, remain focused and there's no other better way to stay focused in math class than taking great math notes. You can't have great math notes by being distracted. You got to be engaged. That's why, you know, uh, you know, it's kind of like evidence of your engagement and paying attention. But if you take great notes, believe me when I tell you, things are going to go so much uh, smoother for you in your math course. Now, um, as you improve in your note-taking, you still need something to study from, so I offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, and algebra 2, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so let's get back to this uh, problem. Now, the uh, point of this video is not to solve this equation, all right? So, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice was breaking up a little bit there. Um, that's not the main idea. Of course, I'm going to uh, solve this equation here in a second. And, and obviously, I want you to be able to solve equations. But what I'm talking about, never do this, is critical. Okay, especially, well, it's just critical across the board. So let's talk a little bit about when you learn math. Okay, hopefully, you, know, you have a very good math teacher. I would assume most of you have a good math teacher. Maybe some are better than others. Remember, teachers like everyone else, uh, there are some teachers that just uh, starting off teaching, and then there are those uh, master teachers who have been teaching 20, 30 years. It could be like, you know, um, excellent. Okay, so it all depends. And I'm not knocking young teachers, but uh, those teachers who have been teaching for decades, you know, are uh, typically going to be that much, um, you know, better at it, just like anything else. The more you do something, the better you're going to be. But uh, my point is, when they are teaching, they are showing you how to do a math problem. So let's say you're studying a problem like this. Your teacher is saying, okay, do it like this, da, 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 da. They're showing you how to do a problem. Now, these steps and all that information, okay, that goes along with these steps should end up in your notes. Okay, that's the whole point here, right? But your teacher is modeling to you how to do a particular problem. Now, on tests and quizzes, right, they want to see 
uh, you kind of demonstrate this procedure back to them. All right. And you should be practicing these same steps in your homework prompts. That's the whole idea behind math education. Uh, your teacher teaches you, you practice on homework. Okay. You come back, you ask questions, and then you take a couple quizzes to see where you're at. And then obviously you take a test. All right. Now, what am I talking about? Never do this. Well, let's take a look at this problem and I'll make my point here. Uh, and it's not going to be too long. It's a, it's pretty obvious um, in terms of uh, the point that I'm going to make. But the simple things are often overlooked in life. And that's where we you know generally go wrong. Just because it's simple doesn't necessarily mean it's easy to always do. Okay, so here's this problem. Okay, this is the original problem right up here. Now, let's, let's say I'm going to explain this problem to you. I'm going to say, okay, I have four times this, I have two times this, and then we have this over here. So I'm solving this equation. By the way, if you don't know how to solve this particular equation, I have tons of videos in my pre-algebra and algebra playlist on solving equations. So I'm not trying to teach you how to solve uh, equations and giving you a full lesson on this because that's not, that's not the point of this particular video, but I am going to explain this. So if you're, um, if you're having trouble with this, then you need to go do additional work on solving equations. But let me get into this problem. All right, so four, this is a, a distributive property uh, situation. Oh, excuse me, my voice was cracking up a little bit there. All right, so four times this is going to be what? Four times 4x times four times five. That's uh, going to be 20, so that's 4x plus 20. Then I have two times 3x, that's 6x, and two times this two over here is a negative four. Okay, then I have 10x over here, and then 5 times 3x is 15x, and 5 times 1 is 5. All right, so that's the first step I take. Now, the next thing you want to do is combine like terms. I have 4x and 6x is 10x, and I have 20 and negative 4 is 16. Then over here I have 10x and 15x is 25x, and then I have my 5. Okay. Now, I can go ahead and move my variables to the left-hand side and my numbers to the right-hand side, and I end up with negative 15x is equal to negative 11. Then I can divide both sides of the equation by negative 15, and I end up with x is equal to 11 over 15. So if you got this right, okay, if you pause the video and you actually did this problem, then I must, in turn, give you a little uh, happy face, a little A+, plus and maybe one or two stars as this wasn't the most difficult problem, but hey, you got the problem right. So that's excellent. Okay. But what's my point? So some of you are out there. Okay. Yeah. All right. What's your point? Well, my point is this. Okay. I'm going to make it right now. This is what a lot of students do. And you uh, wouldn't be in a position to see this because unless you're a math teacher, you wouldn't be grading this all the time. Uh, a lot of students would do something like this. They would just skip this whole part right here. Okay, they do what uh, what I call kind of mental math. They do too much of it. They're trying to do like three steps in one. So they'll do the uh, distributive property. Let's say they got to this point. That's excellent. I'm grading their work. And next thing you know, they're all the way down here. Okay, and I'm like, okay, what happened to your work? Okay, well they're not showing you the work. All right, if your teacher is explaining. Uh, this problem. They're going to show you all the steps in between. But what ends, ends up happening, a lot of students, they'll be like, you know what, I want to save time. I want to save paper. You know, I don't want to, you know, do all these steps. I don't want to write out these steps. For whatever reason, they get a little bit lazy. And they're like, okay, 4x, they can kind of do this all in their brain. They're like, that's going to be 15x. And I got this right here, that's going to be 16. But I move that 16 over here, that'll be negative 11. They do all this mental kind of work. They're, they're, not, they're not doing the work on the, uh, the paper. They're not showing these steps. They're doing it in their brain. They're like, hmm. They're like, okay, let's see. They're doing these calculations up here. And then they're just trying to hold this in. And then they're trying to just like write down these steps. This is very, very, very common. Okay. Math teachers see this all the time. Now, I'm kind of just erase these uh, couple steps here to show you that without uh, that in between step, I can't really follow how you got to this right here. Now I know as a math teacher, I'm be like, okay, I know what you did. I did this, but I'm actually doing the work for you. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to fill in that missing step that you did in your brain. Okay. I'm telling you right now, I would say 90% of math students do this, right? At least initially. And then those students who go on to get A's, all right, 
figure out that I need to show all the steps just like how my teacher taught me or, or is modeling, and then those students continue to struggle, well, they, they, they're not modeling the correct way uh, your teacher is showing you how to do this work, okay? This is the critical thing. So my point is this, never uh, show incomplete work. Show each step, okay? Now, let me erase this here. The value of showing each step is, is, is like, it's a win-win-win, not only for, for you, but for your teacher as well. Uh, let me uh, explain this here in a second. So as your teacher is grading your work, they can kind of confirm what you know. They're like, okay, this person shows me that they know how to do the distributor property. So if I'm your math teacher, I'm like, okay, you are good on the distributor property. Now, um, at this point, though, okay, if you go, let's say, 4x and 6x, and maybe you go 8x, and then right here, let's say you put negative 16, okay? If you wrote that there, I would be like, oh, this person is uh, uh, adding these things up incorrectly. Maybe they don't understand combining like terms. That's probably not the case, all right? They just made some sort of mistake right here, okay? They're not paying attention. But right here, this 20 and this negative four, if they wrote negative 16, I might be suspicious. Like, you know, maybe they are having difficulty with their positive and negative numbers. And I can give them specific uh, advice and suggestions because everything else is gonna, say, let's say, be wrong in the problem, okay? so. Uh, that's the first reason. One, showing your work, all your steps gives your uh, uh, helps your teacher identify weak areas that you might be having, might um, have. Okay, your teacher can't help you unless they know what you know and don't know. Okay, and they can't uh, determine that if unless you're writing down each one of those steps. So that's the first reason. The second thing is your teacher, even if you went from here, okay, all the way down to here. Okay, let's say these last two steps, and this is the correct answer. Many math teachers, including myself, would not give you full credit, even though you had the right answer, because you didn't, you had incomplete justification, all right? So that's another thing, all right? Even though you're able to, let's say, do some mental uh, gymnastics and, and still get the right answer, if you didn't show all your work, uh, you're still going to be, you know, probably not going to be getting full credit with your teacher. Your teacher wants to see those steps. So that's another reason, okay? Make sure if, you, if you're able to get the right answer, get full credit by just showing out those additional steps, okay? So that's another reason to, to uh, show step by step by step. Now, the third reason is when you're uh, uh, writing out each step, you can double check yourself as you go. You can catch errors. There's no way you can be like, okay, from here to here and double check yourself. It's just, you're, there's just too much missing, okay? You can't grade yourself as you go. And that's, I think, maybe a good way that I want to um, um, wrap this video up is when you do mathematics, you kind of want to be your, you want to put yourself in the position as a teacher, kind of grade yourself as you go. And the only way you could do that effectively is to show step by step by step, okay? Now, if you're taking great math notes, which I know that you're going to be after this particular thing, I can tell you right now, for the most part, uh, almost uh, all your teachers out there, hopefully, are modeling the correct way to do, you know, whatever math topic that you're working on, okay? Step by step by step by step by step. When you do your homework, don't, you know, don't do your homework in a sloppy manner because all you're doing is is creating poor math habits that are gonna come, uh, they're gonna they're gonna turn around and, and bite you. Okay, the way you do your homework is the way you're gonna uh, perform on your quiz and test. So, you know, the bottom line in terms of mathematics is the following: it's work. Okay, but everyone can do great in it, but there's no shortcuts. Okay, uh, you gotta take notes, you gotta practice correctly, you gotta show your teacher what you know and don't know, and just work on constant improvement. If you do all of that, I could tell you right now, you're gonna do very very well and uh, mathematics. And of course, if you're like, nah, no, nah, I don't have to do that. I don't have to do this. Well, then people, you know, they'll end up struggling. And then, then you know, they'll always say, well, why me? Why did this happen? You know, and, and unfortunately, people just never learn. They'll stick with these bad habits, okay? So these are some critical things that if you turn around, okay, you start showing all your work, you know, being nice, neat, and organized, start taking notes, believe me, your math progress is going to go just, it's going to skyrocket. Okay, so hopefully this video was helpful to you. Um, it's certainly, from as a, as a math teacher, 
you know, uh, this is probably one of the most important things that I could share with you. Show your work being neat and organized. This is paramount. That's why, by the way, you should always work in pencil, okay, and not pen, because when you're working with pen, obviously, as some of you have that erasable type pen, but work in pencil so you can erase and keep nice, neat, and organized. But mathematics is really the sum total of a lot of different habits, study habits, etc. All right, so if this video helped you out in some way, please consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my uh, channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for a long time, 10 plus years at this point. Uh, I'm sure I have over a thousand videos by now. I don't, I don't even count. I just post videos. My passion is to teach mathematics and I really try to teach math in a clear and understandable way, okay, to help you out. So please take advantage of all the material that I've posted if you like my teaching style. And I'm posting uh, new stuff all the time, but my best math help will be in my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.